Hello and welcome to this GCSE explainer on climate change mitigation and adaptation. So we've already covered climate change in a previous video. Um, this is all about mitigation, which is when people reduce the causes of a hazard to their lives. So can we reduce the causes of, of climate change? And then the alternative is, is, is adaptation, when people respond to change to limit its impact or to take advantage of the change. Um, and you see on there a graphic, which we'll have a, we'll have a think about a little bit more in a, in a moment. Um, but you can see that the sea levels are predicted to, to go up. Our instrumental records have shown already that uh, sea levels have, have risen, okay, and that's in millimetres. Um, and by the end of this century, uh, we've got predictions of any, anywhere from 25 centimetres all the way up to 50 odd centimetres worth of, of sea level rise. Okay. Um, so in order to prevent those sort of changes and the, the changes we're seeing in our weather um, patterns, uh, we can try and mitigate, so we can try and reduce the the causes of global warming. So one is to turn to alternative energy production. In case you've got some uh, wind turbines there, one of the major causes of the rise in the world's temperature is that people are, are too reliant on burning fossil fuels for energy, transport, and heat. Okay, so to change that, we can go to non-renewable fossil fuels, uh, non-renewable fuels rather. Um, Go away from those and move towards these sorts of, of types here. So we've got um, we've got wind turbines. So I'll just I'll just talk through those. So modern windmills called turbines turn wind energy into electricity. If the turbines are in a group, it's called a wind farm. And these are, have some great features. It's renewable energy, um, and that's because we will never run out of the wind. The price of wind energy is stable as well. It doesn't go up or down like the price of coal or oil. And for the UK, we get a lot of wind annually. But there are some disadvantages. There's some local opposition and concern about noise and impact on the landscape. Um, and wind is more expensive than, expensive than fossil fuels to actually set up. And wind levels can fluctuate over time. So you can have a think about those different types and whether what the pros and cons are. The second mitigation option is carbon capture. And we can do that naturally uh, or industrially. So um, when we produce energy, the CO2 could be captured in the factory before the gases are released into the atmosphere, so we put filters and things in. The CO2 is then uh, turned into a dense liquid, and that dense liquid is pumped into the porous rock layers, um, a, a kilometre or more underground, where it will be trapped um, and held under the ground like that. So we can, uh, the idea would be to trap the carbon um, in, the, in the Earth's crust. Okay, There is a natural way of doing that, and that's through uh, planting trees. So uh, we plant new trees. Um, the trees take in CO2 from the atmosphere via photosynthesis. The new biomass, the stem wood, the branches, the leaves, they all store carbon. The litter goes into the soil, so the soil increases in carbon. And then some will be released back out through respiration of the, of the tree and decay of leaf litter. But by planting more trees, we could take even more of that out. So those act as a net sink for, for carbon. And the last mitigation is international agreements, and we've had lots of these. Um, so global warming was identified as an issue that needed sorted in 1988, when the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change was established. We had the Earth Summit in 1992 in Rio de Janeiro, uh, and that pledged to stabilise greenhouse gas levels to prevent dangerous human interference with the climate system. We then had the Kyoto Protocol of 1997, and probably the most significant recent ones were held in Paris in 2015. And there uh, we agreed to try and keep global warming emissions down so that temperature would not rise above two degrees Celsius uh, with a goal of um, actually not more than 1.5 degrees Celsius. And there was also a budget in that, uh, in that international agreement for poorer countries to help them cope with their reduction in climate change emissions. In terms of adaptation, uh, we're going to look at three areas. So one, uh, can we change our farming or agricultural systems? So um, there'll be positive and negative features. So in the UK, we can expect increased yields for things like wheat, sugar beet and potatoes, better grass yields and so on. Uh, we might lose certain fish stocks as they move north. We might have some crop losses through flooding and um, we might lose some forestry industry through uh, lower timber yields and uh, from drier conditions and so on. OK, so we could adjust to that by altering the species we farm. We could use technology to harvest water like dams and so on for when we have drier periods. 
We could drain water from certain areas to prevent water logging. Uh, we can improve pest disease and weed control and so on. So there's lots of things we can do to adapt to uh, climate change. And then we can manage our water supply. Okay, fresh water is human for uh, vital for human survival. Only two percent of the water on the world is, is fresh, and a lot of that is locked up with snow and ice. So um, climate change will, will will affect that because some parts of the world will become increasingly drier, some will become wetter, and we need to adjust to that. So um, strategies for that include engineering solutions. So we could store it in reservoirs and pipe it, like we do in the Kielder Water Scheme. We could use desalinization plants, but that's very um, energy intensive. We can put tube wells and, uh, and boreholes in, in poorer countries as well to try and tap into groundwater sources in those countries. And the last adaptation is reducing the risk from rising sea levels. So um, sea levels are, are going up and the IPCC think they're going to continue to go up. Uh, flooding costs could rise from the current 1.2 billion a year to between 2.1 billion and 12 billion by the 2080s. So we need to sort something out for that. So uh, we can build um, and engineer things. Okay, so costly coastal defences like uh, walls and groins, the Thames Barrier needs replacing to defend central London. We could abandon certain areas and we can plan so we can put shoreline management plans in, in place. So in terms of tasks, there's a video there for you to think about what effects of, of climate change there are. It's a very good video from the Met Office. And then get some definitions down for mitigation and adaptation. Can you think of any examples of both? Describe the change in sea level. And then uh, complete an infographic on the, on the mitigation and adaptation. So you've got a nice little graphic organiser there. Try and put in each box something that explains and gives examples of those either adaptation techniques or mitigation. And as usual, there's a worksheet to help you to help you through that task. And uh, the web page there, Managing Climate Change at Cool Geography, will help you with that. OK, good luck with that. And uh, one little joke for you. Uh, you know the crazy people you see in the streets shouting that the world is ending? Turns out they're all actually climate scientists. See you later.